Hey fashion interior design class, welcome to the new project that you're going to be working on in the next couple weeks. Um, I'm just going to go through a couple of presentations and describe in detail what it is I want you to do, but it is a drawing project. So you're either going to be drawing a uh, line of clothing or you're going to be drawing an interior space. And there's a lot of different options and processes that I want you to take with this. So let's get to some of those details, shall we? The very first thing that I want you to do is to create an idea or inspiration board. This is a collection of different items that you're going to be using to inspire your work. So I want some of the elements that you collect, that you put in this idea or inspiration board to show up in your final pieces, be it in the interior spaces or line of clothing. Right? So what is an idea or inspiration board? It's a collection of materials, usually that are similar, that you're using as inspiration to draw from, to pull colors from, to pull textures from, shapes, right? Designs, anything like that. Things could be, you could have contrasting elements in your idea uh, inspiration boards, but I wanna see those elements in your work. So if you have a bunch of like something that is red and a bunch of something that is blue, I wanna see those reds and those blues in your work in your final pieces, okay? So I wanna see that you've, you've used this as a source of inspiration for your creativity to then bring it into your work, right? Use this to inspire your designs. Then, after making the idea inspiration board, create a rough sketch of your ideas, just basic outlines. This might be stuff that you'll discard and never use, but I wanna see some just sketches, some ideas coming out on the paper inspired by that, that inspiration or idea board. Okay. Then finally, after working through some sketches, you'll create a finished, detailed, colored interior space design or a fashion line of at least five clothing items. Okay. So it has to be at least five. Could be more with details, colors, and all of those elements, you know, to the, to the extent of your abilities. So that's the process I want you to follow. This could be done digitally or physically. It's totally up to you. There's a lot of free software out there that you could use to do it digitally. Maybe you have a drawing tablet. Um, maybe you're really good with a mouse and you're going to do different elements, bring that in, use shapes to kind of create the basic forms and, and work from there. Or you can draw on, on pieces of paper. You could do it in your sketchbook. You can get larger sheets of paper if you want. It's totally up to you where you do this. You can do individuals on each page of your sketchbook if you wanted, cut them out, put them together, photograph them, you know, arrange them however you want. If you're doing it digitally, you could pull in images of, of models wearing clothes and draw over that on a layer on top, but, a, but make sure that you are significantly altering um, the original clothing if you're going to take that route, okay? Kind of like the one with the model wearing the jacket um, and the sweater. That's obviously been significantly altered. You don't see the original clothing anymore. You just see the new elements, okay? So you can do this digitally or you could do it physically. I mentioned some of the free software that's available to you. Home by Me, if you want to do an interior space, is a great free online uh, interior space editing um, software. You can basically create something from scratch. You can make a floor plan. You can add different uh, furniture into that floor, floor plan. It has a huge database of different things that you can add into a space. Uh, and then you can add things like pictures and you can paint walls. And then what's really great is you can see it at all these different views as the floor plan, kind of from above looking on an angle or from actually being inside the space. So Home By Me is a free digital editing um, platform if you want to do an interior design and you want to do it digitally. I briefly mentioned before, if you want to do some collage, go for it. There's a lot of students that have done a really great job using some collage elements and creating their actual finished line of clothes. Um, you could do some collage, some drawing. It's totally up to you. Again, the main thing is I want to see a finished product that has um, a, a certain level of detail to it that you bring these, you know, these elements out that you refine it based on some of the things that we've done in the past, but um, you could really use any process that you want. If you're going to be drawing or doing this in any way, remember some of the things that we've talked about throughout the, the first weeks of this class. Um, remember to simplify, to, to start with simple shapes and 
build detail on top as you go. Drawing is all about starting simple, looking for the basic proportions, getting those basic shapes, and then adding details as you go, okay? If you're looking for some more drawing help, a great way to start is by tracing your croquis. So take a sheet of paper, take your croquis, and trace the form right? Because I'm not expecting you to have all of the skills to basically draw a person from scratch. Um, you can use windows to do this. So if you put your croquis on the window and put the sheet of paper over it, you can tape it if you want. Um, it basically acts as a tracing table. So trace the basic lines of the croquis. Don't trace hard. Do it very lightly with a light pencil. Um, again, remember your basic shapes as you're starting to add the clothing over that form right? Is it triangle? Is it inverted triangle? Is it more rectangle? Um, is it more hourglass? Is it bell-shaped, right? Is it more, um, you know, oval, cocoon? All of those elements, right? So start with your basic shapes and build from there, right? You want to do all of this very lightly, okay? You just want to be using a, uh, your, your lighter pencil, right? And you want to just be lightly putting these shapes on there because eventually you're probably going to erase those details add details, build layers as you go. And then when you finally have all of that together, you can uh, start adding your color. The human formal elements are not necessary. You don't need to draw the face. You don't need to draw the mouth and the eyes and the details of the hand. These could be very simple shapes, okay? Just like a circle and even circles for the hands. I'm not looking for a lot of detail there. I wanna see the details in your other designs. Also, if you want, go cartoon style. That's totally fine. Um, there's an example right there with some simple processes of drawing in a more cartoon style. That's fine, right? As long as you make some detailed choices, bring in some color and elements into the clothing that you're putting on your figures. Remember your inspiration boards, okay? So don't forget about that. Um, I think that's a really important part of the, the creative process to start with some inspiration to be influenced. What are you, you know, where are you going to go? And this helps to answer that question when you're starting. It's like, oh my God, I can make a, a design about anything. I don't really know where to start. Your creation board is how it starts. Start flipping through pages of a magazine. Go on the internet. Start searching through different catalogs. Go on Pinterest, right? Start saving the things that are interesting to you. At first, it might just be a mess of stuff, but eventually start to hone in what it is you might want to see and, and selecting very specific elements to be a part of your inspiration to, to then influence your designs. But I really want to see those elements coming into it, right? And these can be textural, it could be shape-based, right? Color-based, all of those things can end up in your pieces. Take a look at some of these examples here, and especially with the ones with the, the clothing line, and see how those colors and, and elements end up in those pieces, okay? Here are some student examples of the clothing lines, right? As you can see in the first two images on the um, left, you start off, you see that little inspiration creativity board on the side, and then you see the line of clothing coming um, on the side of that, right? They're included together or next to each other. But notice how those things obviously showed up in the inspirations for the clothing line. That first one on the top left has a lot of different elements that are showing up in those, those pieces. Some are circles, some are lines. There's a little bit of, of a style, a theme, like a retro theme that kind of fits through all of those pieces, but their inspiration board was a little bit more eclectic, right? It had a lot of different elements, but those elements ended up showing it up in the work. So make sure that that happens, right? And again, you're going to add detail and you're going to draw to the best of your abilities. I, I don't expect all of you to be really amazing artists or, or renderers at this point. I want you to do the best that you can, but take it slow. Remember those steps, simplify, and then have a t like subtle attention to detail. Take your time. Um, simplifying and then taking time are two of the major aspects of, of getting results that you're happy about, right? Do sketches. Try things out first before you go to your finished thing. Don't expect to go from like, from like start to finish in one, you know, fluid uh, um, motion, right? There's going to be like, changes and things here. You're going to have to try something out, see if it works, and then try again, okay? But here are some examples if you wanted to, to look at that. Again, remember your basic shapes and forms. The principles of design will help guide you through this, your elements of art, right? How you can start 
with the basic shapes of the silhouettes. How do those shapes then look on the human form? Look at these examples here of different shapes being played out over a form, laid over a form. Think about, you know, even in the neck, the collar, how you can have different shapes there. Look, think about how line can extend the form or widen the form when placed in very specific areas. This is going to be like a careful eye. You're going to be taking a careful eye and applying it to your work. And this also goes for interior spaces, drawing your line, having a focal point, right? Balance, symmetry, or asymmetrical balance. All of those elements I want you to be thinking about, the color, the texture, right? Is it balanced? Does it have patterns in it? Is it harmonious? What are the proportions? How, like, again, think about specifically where different lines are placed, but it all starts really at what's the basic shape that you're putting into your piece, right? If you're doing an interior space, it's just like, you know, a square for a chair that goes here, getting the size proportions, a feel for it, not going right to the finished couch or the finished chair. Again, look at those basic shapes. Uh, the inverted triangle, for instance, there's more visual weight at the top, right? This was popular in like the 1940s, um, but also in like came back in the 1980s as a futuristic look. Uh, think about the organic shapes with the cocoon. Most of the visual weight is actually in the middle of the of the garment, which is was popular in the 1920s, Art Deco, and is currently a particular um, um, interest in, in modern design. Uh, the rectangle, right? The shape tube silhouette, the drop waist, uh, it's very androgynous. Again, popular in the 1920s with those really straight long lines. Um, and then the bell shape, which is like kind of going back to, you know, uh, pre-1900s, uh, um, but has been repopularized again, where the skirts were very large and full, right? Those basic shapes. The square or box shape in clothing, right? Again, like, you know, kind of sometimes breaks it up in the middle there to create like more of a square on the top that kind of goes from the bottom down. Um, this is again, a kind of an androgynous style uh, silhouette that disguises the, the like the, the body's feminine curves and was very popular in the 1980s um, or the hourglass shape, right? Which is a silhouette designed to emphasize the female forms, narrow waistline, rounded hip line and bust. So those two are very opposites, right? Remember your principles of design, trying to find balance or asymmetrical balance in your work. Uh, this, again, can apply to uh, clothing or can apply to interior spaces, proportions, um, rhythm, how things move. Where does your eye start? Where does it end up? Right. That process. Uh, what's your focal point? What's the emphasis? Here are some more examples that you can take a look at. You know, pause this video at any point that you want to take a closer look at some of these ideals, um, creating balance in a space, how you can do that, um, creating rhythm, which is different than than balance, right? There's a focal point. Where do you go next? The, the kind of the flow in the space. How does it function, right? Um, creating harmony, right? Creating a sense of peace. Elements should work together without clashing. Proportion and scale. So design elements should match with the proportions of the living space, right? Um, fit nicely into that space. If you have a corner that you want to put something in, you know, you don't want that chair to be too big in that corner, right? Emphasis, again, what is the focal point? What is the main thing you see when you walk into a room? And lastly, do not forget color. It's so vitally important to this whole process. Um, one of the things that I like to do is get color schemes from online. I look to look at like to look at images that have really great color schemes in them and pull colors from that to kind of serve as my inspiration. Again, this is where your inspiration uh, boards are going to come in really big. But you can also go online, Google color schemes to look for a lot of different color schemes that are out there. You can kind of read a little bit about them, see what they do, what they inspire, how they make you feel, and then bring those elements into your pieces. And they could be kind of a contrast against the the forms that you're using, right? If you have very retro style forms and you want to go for more modern color, you know, that might work in an interesting way. Also, you know, if your pieces are better black and white, like if that's what they're meant to be, if they're kind of like wedding dresses with some simple designs, just black and white print, that's okay. Like if it's if it's meant to be black and white, then it's meant to be black and white, okay? Don't have to force color into something that that was not your original intention. 
Most of all, I want you to have fun with this project. Again, take a look at this video whenever you want. Go back, look at the different elements, and follow those processes. Start, start off with inspiration. Start slow with some drafting. Work, build layers on top of each other until you end up with a finalized piece. Um, there's no point in rushing this. You don't learn anything. Have fun, and I will see you soon.